Hi guys and welcome to Sunderland vs Cambridge match preview. Now I do apologise, I'm like a beetroot and I'm very very sweaty. I've just uh, been for a run, it's very very hot here in Blackpool. It's the first run I've done in like a year, like a proper run. And uh, Stanley Park in Blackpool and uh, I'm absolutely exhausted. I've proper blown a gasket and I'm, uh, I'm a mess. So uh, I do apologise for that. But we will get into the preview to this game. So we're going to be taking on Cambridge at the stage. My team are in a little bit of inconsistent form, but they have picked up some decent results as of late. And we will go through them. You know, last time we played Cambridge, you know, last year, 2021, uh, we did win by two goals to one. But that doesn't tell the whole story. You know, it wasn't an easy game at all away from home. But having a look at Cambridge's uh, recent run of form, they did get beat at home against Charlton 2-0, but before that, they went away from home to Wigan. Of course, not an easy place to go, although we did pick up 3-0 win there. But either way, they uh, they won by two goals to one. Before that, at home, they played Morecambe. They won by two goals to one. Before that, they got battered 4-1 against uh, against Wickham. Before that, they picked up a brilliant result against Ipswich 1-0 as well. Before that, they beat Wimbledon 1-0. Before that, they got beat by MK Dons 1-0. So, you know, it's not like they're getting absolutely thrown all over the place by the big sides, other than Wickham with the 4-1 defeat there. But the, 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 they're not a bad side at all. That's why they're mid-table, you know. Well, you could argue that maybe they've only got a couple of games left, including this one. They might not have too much to fight for, but they're going to want to, you know, finish the season as as brightly as humanly possible but as are we we've got so much to play for now and after last night's result guys of last night's results should i say you know this league table it, even automatics is still somewhat of a possibility for Sunderland right now unlikely yes granted but it's still possible if i put up the league table now on screen right this is why the results that we've sort of thrown away or some of the points over the season that we've thrown away is so unbelievably frustrating because with literally another couple of wins that should have been, you know, that should have been wins rather than, than losses or draws, we could have easily been flying in the top two by now. If you look at some of them, you know, particularly over the course of sort of early January to early February, if you have a look at some of the results that we had, you know, the... The um, the three all early January the uh, the three all draw against Wickham where we were three two up we made it three two in the ninety second minute we went on to draw so that's two points dropped there you know we got a beat at home against Lincoln it was the Chris Maguire hat trick we got beat three one there at Quinton Stanley in January as well we were a goal up Aki went a goal down they still equalised and we dropped two points there. You know, Bolton, the 6-0, the famous 6-0 battering at Bolton. You know, early February, we got beat by bottom of the league at the time, Doncaster 2-1 at the stage of light in a game where Doncaster had, I think it was like 22% possession, which I know doesn't mean everything. But still, after that, we got beat against Cheltenham 2-1. The points dropped, you know, early on in the season when, I think it was Shrewsbury. Yeah, they went a man down as well, and they still managed to get a one all draw. There was little points there, and I know I could go over every single defeat and every... And, and every single punch we've dropped, and I know that every team does it, but it just makes them so much more frustrating because literally another two or three wins, and we'd be second, and we'd be absolutely flying as well, but we're not, and that's the end of the story. So we're currently six points off, just six points off second place. You know, we're in a very decent position. I need to remember that as well. All these teams around us, they're playing each other. Yes, we need to play Rotherham, who are just coming into a real dip in form as well. You know, we've got we've got Rotherham to play in our final three games. We also have Morecambe as well, who have everything to play for. They're trying to squeeze their way away from the um from the relegation zone. So some big, big games here, but it makes this one another must win, you know, because you've got other sides around us playing each other. So everyone around us has to drop points. There's no if, buts, or maybes. They have to drop points. So we need to continue winning games or at least not lose. Well, I say not lose. I can't, I can't. We can't give that excuse. We need to win. We need nine from nine, essentially. If we want to get in the playoffs, yes, seven. We need. I think we need seven, I believe it is, seven points to 100% confirm it, which isn't going to be easy, an easy task. But there is that tiny, tiny chance. And I can see everyone on Twitter last night. Everyone's got all the fingers and thumbs out trying to work out whether we can work it, get our way into the automatics. And there is a chance, but all the only thing we can do is worry about our own games because it's not 100% in our hands at the moment. But win our own games and we're going to win the playoffs. That's it. So, yes, going into my sort of my thoughts and uh, my preferred 11 for this game, it's a difficult one because, you know, there's a chance Pritchard could be involved. And I think if Pritchard is available, you start Pritchard, hands down. Also, I've had to try and think of whether we should be dropping Ross Stewart. Now, that doesn't mean I think he's put to play necessarily badly, which. He, he kind of, he kind of is, but you can see he's blown a gasket. He has knackered himself a bit like me now. He's absolutely exhausted. He's run himself into the ground, and that isn't his fault. He's played forty plus games this season. You know, we got called up for Scotland when he didn't play, but um, but he's gone through so much this season. We've used him so much and relied so heavily on him that I think that this could be a game in which Alex Neil may drop him or rest him. Should I say? But I think drop him sounds a bit more 
Sounds a bit more sort of clinical for him. But for me, I would still have to start him. Because for me against Cambridge at home, we need to throw everything at them. We need to throw absolutely everything at them. And I've changed my mind with what lineup I would go with, what system, what formation I would go with. I've changed it so many times for this game. But I've landed on this one, and I'll probably explain some other systems or some different formations or, or, or a different personnel that I would use. But I feel like there's some players that probably need dropping and some that need using if they are available. So this is going to be my preferred Sunderland eleven for this game on Saturday. So we have a sort of, it's almost like a 3-5-2 almost, or a sort of 3-2-3-2. Three, two, three, two. Um, so we have Pato in goal, we have Sirkin, Wright and Winchester as a back three. Evans will be starting alongside Matete with Embo, pushing a little bit further forward. Although the thing is, I quite like Embleton just in a, in a sort of flat two, say with Evans and Embleton or Matete and Embleton. I, I think Embleton is actually very, very good just sitting in that centre of midfield and breaking forward. A lot of people seem to sort of shoehorn him or at least manage him sort of shoe, shoehorned him into a number 10 role or a winger role. And I genuinely think he can do a very, very good job just straight from the centre of midfield. He breaks up the play at times when he has to. Granted, he's not known for his sort of defensive tackling ability. But in terms of breaking up the play and then beginning an attack, he's so, so good at it. And we know how threatening he can be in recent weeks. But, but yeah, if Matete and Evan Dodd start, you would imagine Emerson would be a little bit in front. Pritchard, if he is available and he is, of course, uh, if he's fit, I would stick him on the, either on the left or the right, but Roberts I'm going to put on the right there with Broadhead and Stewart up top. Now, the only reason I've kind of stuck with Stewart as well is because I think Clark has played that badly, I didn't want to drop Stewart and then stick sort of Clark on the left and then maybe Pritchard in behind Broadhead, something like that. I just really believe that Clark needs to be dropped. Because I think he's been that bad. He's been, uh, for me, he's just been very, very poor, Clark. I do, actually, I do actually like him as a player. I don't think he's a bad player as such. I just think he becomes very predictable when, when we're on the break against sides. He slows the play down. He tries to take on the man at the same time over and over again. And when we're quickly on the counter-attack, like I say, he just stops the play and he allows the opposition to get back and regroup. And then he becomes very predictable and loses the ball time and time again. And his final ball at times is just utterly embarrassing. So, uh, and again, I don't think it's a bad player. That's just the way it has been over the last literally sort of three, four, five games for him. Um, but he still finds himself in the starting eleven, whereas Patrick Roberts comes on off the bench and he looks so much more influential. Although you can argue, I think it was the last time he did start Roberts, he did look just as poor as Clark. So it's kind of trying to juggle those two. But that is probably what I would go with. You might say there's not enough maybe pace on the wings. You could maybe push, push sorry, Pritchard a bit more centrally and, and brought it out wide for, for that pace. Um, but yeah, that, that, those are the person I would go with. Or what I suppose you could do is put Sirkin as the sort of left-hand side because I do love Sirkin as a left wing back. I think he's very, very good. Going forward, Sirkin is absolutely fantastic on that left-hand side. But then you'd have to put someone like either Denny Bart in there or Doyle. But Doyle hasn't even featured on the bench over the last couple of weeks or a couple of games. So I mean, Bart there cause just to solidify things at the back. So if Cambridge want to you know, counter, we have some solid bodies at the back. And then we push Sirkin forward and then you maybe drop you don't know, be Pritchard if he isn't fit, you know, and, and Six Circ in there. Uh, but but that, that, that is sort of the personnel I would go for. But again, you guys let me know in the comments down below. It was very, very difficult for me this week. It really was difficult. I've been changing constantly. Um, would you drop Stewart? You know, give him a bit of a rest. But it is such a crucial part of the season. And we know what he can do when he is on form. But you can just see he is he's lagging at the minute. And he's also, I think, his confidence is shot. You can see it, you know, early on in the season, some of the chances he got against Plymouth, you know he would have buried him. You know, there's a chance when he was put through one of them on the keeper, but his touch was just awful. Most touches were just sort of bobbling off him, even though it looked really simpler to control, you know. It just really isn't going for him at the minute. But, um, you know, against a side like Cambridge, you know, if we are going to go all out, he might find himself get four, five, six chances. And there's only put one away, his confidence will be back. So uh, maybe keep Stuart. But again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. But now for my score predictions. So again, it's going to be another side for me that are going to kind of sit back. But at the same time, I do say sit back. But like I say, at the same time, they aren't necessarily playing for anything. They're safe. They're not going to get in the playoffs. So they could just go all out, you know, and if that is the case, then I think that'll give us a lot of space. And that's why I'm going to go for a Sunderland 3-0 win. And I hope and I do think that Ross Stewart will get himself back on the score sheet. And I also think Broadhead is going to get himself a double. So I'm going to go for a 3-0 Sunderland win. I don't think it's going to be easy, but because I do think if Cambridge do come and simply sit sit back and try and frustrate us, like a lot of teams do come to Sage and Light and they play in that way, I do think we'll struggle. I don't think it will be a 3-0 win, but I do think we're going to win regardless. But if Cambridge do come out, the go at us. I'm going to go for a Sunderland 3-0 win. Now, this weekend, I did say in the review to... Um, <coughs> excuse me. In the review to the, the, the previous game against Plymouth, I did say that I'm working on Saturday. I misread my rotor. I'm actually working Friday into Saturday. I'm doing the night shift from Friday into Saturday. Then I'm doing Sunday into Monday. 
So I am going to live stream on Saturday. So I hope to see you there. It'll be, probably be about quarter to three, about you know, 15 minutes before kickoff. I am hoping to live stream uh, the game against Cambridge. So join me there. We always have such a laugh. Um, and hopefully I can uh, stick my five shirts on and we get a last minute winner again. Or it could just be plain sailing. Hopefully. But anyway, let me know down below in the comments show everything you think about, you know, are we going to win the game? What's the score prediction is going to be? Uh, and your preferred 11s, all that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments down below. But hit the like button if you have enjoyed and subscribe. We are so, so close to 14,000 subscribers. It'd be so, so appreciated. If you're a regular viewer, you enjoy the content, but you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, please do it for me. Again, it's so, so appreciated. But that'll be it for now, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Take care and stay jamming.